This conference will now be recorded. The sound's off, but yours going. Okay, sounds good. All right. Um, call the Vice Principal Pedestrian Committee meeting for Monday, March 11th to order. Um, roll call, please. Tracy Fluky. Yeah. Kyle Jago. Here. Jessica Atkinson. Here. Kim Shannon. Here. Here. <laughs> and Sharon Powell. Here. Um, let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, and what motion to approve the agenda for the meeting? Second, make a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. Nitesa? I'll second. Second, Mike Kyle. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Kim, can you hear okay? Okay. Um, action on the minutes from February 12th. Any corrections or changes to the minutes? The only thing I saw very minor, picky, um, 11A with a motion to adjourn. There's not a space between that and the time of adjourning. Yeah, very picky. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Any other changes or corrections to the minutes? Anybody? Okay. A lot of motion, somebody. I move we accept them as presented. Moved by Kyle. Second. Second by Sharon. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, comments from the public um, must be limited to items not on the agenda, must state name and address, limited to five minutes, or to to listen and not discuss the item. Personal issues cannot be discussed nor individuals named, and the board is not able to take action at this meeting. Nobody in the room and nobody online, so I think we can continue on. Seven to reports and updates. And good day, sir. Grab a seat and grab a packet. Thank you, Mario. How are you? Good, how are you? Grab a seat. It's clear if you'd like. Yeah. Just in time for reports. You're sitting there. Um, so reports and updates, we'll start with Ashwell on public safety. Brian, you sitting in the back over there, anything to share with us? Uh, nothing much to add since uh, last meeting. Um, thus far this year, uh, knock on wood, we've only had one uh, bicycle or pedestrian related crash. Uh, and that was a pedestrian crossing on Ida Street back in January. Um, 509 in Phoenix, outside of any crosswalk, came across and was uh, tapped by a um, vehicle turning out of the parking lot. Um, other than that, current process continues. Um, making our way through backgrounds, and some people are not making it through the background. So, we're doing our best to make sure we are at least hiring quality candidates. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, nothing much to add from uh, last month's meeting. Any questions for Brian? Everybody in public safety. Okay. How about um, Brian from Public Works? What do you got for us? You have a report out here. Yep. So I'll hammer through this real quick. Uh, Brookwood and Lombardi Access Road, um, that project was awarded to Vintage Construction Company. Um, I did hear just last week that they plan on starting that construction on uh, April 1st, is their tentative start date. Um, so with that, we plan to have a um, business owner pre-construction meeting to get all the business owners aware of um, the impacts during that construction. Um, currently, we're looking at having that meeting um, on March 25th, which is a Monday before the board meeting. Um, Industrial Park Trail, um, Steve and myself still, still need to take the time to review the MEPCD uh, in regards to the bollard placement for that. Um, Ashwaubenay River Trail Extension, um, that's a park and rec project. Really don't have any updates at this time on that project. Um, designed for West Main Ave Trail and Sidewalk Extension. Uh, McMahon was working on doing some title searches and reviewing the existing um, transportation project plots in that area to determine where the right of way is, um, will help, which will then help them determine where they need to uh, purchase land or where we may need to purchase land. Um, and then with that, they'll be able to start moving into the utility complex. Um, trail extension, Argonne Park, uh, that's another park and rec project. Um, traffic signal controller. Uh, replacement 
Um, I did actually meet with a vendor on Friday of last week to talk about different traffic sing signal controllers and what's going to best fit our needs. Um, we do have that narrowed down to a signal, single type of traffic signal controller. Um, we are also advised just based on the existing condition of our traffic control cabinets that our cabinet should also be replaced, um, which is not a surprise to me. Um, I did um, use some numbers to put together budgets to assume that we were going to have to replace them because they are well beyond the end of their service life. Um, I don't have any updates on our traffic signal push button countdown timer replacement. Um, Green Bay is aware uh, of that project and it is something that they do have on their radar. Um, design for Packerland and Grant Street roundabout um, with um, some vacancies within the County Highway Department. Um, I did not receive any updates on that. I did ask. Um, I'm assuming that um, other projects are carrying a little bit greater priority since this is quite a few years out. They're probably waiting until they have similar vacancies filled before they push forward with that project. So. With that, that's all I have. Um, Brian, for the industrial park trail. Yes. When do you think you would be ready to come back to the light pet committee with that? If when you would see that time, just so we keep it on our agenda and get it set like a couple yeah. months yet, May or so, or June? Yeah, I, no, I would hope May at the latest. Okay. All right, Kelly, can you just note that in there yeah. to try to um, put the industrial park trail on in May? And then Brian, just update her if that's not going to work. Yep, and then we'll just push it back one. Um, April 1st start date, you said for Lombardi? Correct. Oh. Um, any other questions for Brian? Um, any public works type things? Yeah, I noticed that they're starting to do some tree work on, um, uh, can't think of the name, Hanson Road. And we were talking about eventually having sidewalks on the south side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I noticed that they cut some trees down there. Yeah, so that, those trees, are you talking about the property near Hanson and Ridge? Yeah, so just south, just, north, just a west of Ridge, you know, Next to like Ridge before you get to the apartments. I, I don't know who was doing that work. I think that might have been part of the EAB removal contract. Oh. Um, but that. That was not work that was being done under public works. I don't know, David, if you know anything about any of that. Um, it, was okay. the same, it was the same group of guys that was doing the trees. Yeah. So. And then most likely it was the EAB. Yeah. Yeah, it's not necessarily related to the sidewalk, but that okay. sidewalk is in our capital improvement plan for 2028. That's where it's at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might not be around at that time. Maybe you will, yeah, hopefully. You're gonna make it. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, I have a question on up by um Lambeau Field. Yeah. I was up there for the girls' basketball tournament this weekend. And we have Brett Farr Pass, which runs north south in front of the new legacy hotel and goes mm -hmm. towards South Star Stadium. Um, and then you have that one piece that goes east west that goes back out to Holmgren. Is that Brett Farr Pass also? Where it kind of turns and it runs between so stadium Brett, and the new uh, maybe new development. Brett Favre Pass um, has a hard S turn in it. Okay, it's so that is all Brett Favre. That is. Okay, yep. so my question to you: um, the piece that runs east west, they put that new stop sign in, Correct. and it says except for where it turns only. Is that the village of Ashwaubenon's property? Is that the city of Green Bay's? So that corner, right where the stop sign is placed, is actually the villages. We we installed that sign. Okay. Um, we spoke about that sign at our traffic safety committee. Um, what was happening is is there was quite a few near misses as the vehicles would come from yeah. Brett Park Pass. They were going to the Legacy Hotel, yep. and they weren't yielding to the cars that were coming, we'll say west yep. or north. Yeah. Um, so what it is is it's making sure that those individuals that are pulling into that Legacy driveway do stop. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it's allowing the people that are just staying on the roadway, so the right turners, to just carry on through. So that's why it's right turn, no stop. Okay. And that's what I kind of figured mm -hmm. on. But I was just, one I was there the other night, and obviously there's a ton of people walking around. There's very little light on Brett Farber. I don't know if there, there's looked like there was one light that was out that mm -hmm. probably wasn't working. And again, I don't know if that's Green Bay, if that's a Schwabana. So we only own um, up until the, the back side. Uh, of, of the, so it's essentially it's like 150 feet off from Holmgren, 
So as soon as you, you bend and start turning, so say you're coming off from home, turning south. you have to start turning south. Before you even start turning, it switches to Green Bay. Okay, and that's what I was thinking. Um, but I I saw, th there's no sidewalks, so people are walking in the street. And even with that right turn, no stop sign, um, I almost saw three girls get picked off because they have to walk in the road. They were walking, you know, against traffic. And there's just no light there. And I realize it's Green Bay, but I just, this is an accident waiting to happen and it's so busy there. If there's something that we could at least maybe talk to the city or work with the city and all the parking on the Brett Favre Pass that runs east-west mm -hmm. is is tough too. There's nowhere to walk there and everyone's walking in the road. So maybe just to take a look at it and bring yeah, something back because mm -hmm. it's, you know, and obviously it was a big event and there were a lot of people running, walking around, but I just think it's something that we you know, maybe work with the city and see what we can do and maybe get some more light up there or more safety. Um, yeah, I can look to see if there's any lights that are burnt out that shouldn't be. Um, yeah, there was one, I think, on the west side of that fire that looked like it was out. And then Green Bay has those new ones on the east side. And they didn't look like they were working in that particular area. They were working on Coney Canadeo. They looked like they were working there, but they weren't working on Red Fire for some reason. Maybe with all the construction going on there, they didn't act, one of them activated yet or something, but. Um, yeah, there's three street lights in that very short block. So there, there is quite a few lights, actually, whether or not they're operational, like, I don't know, I can definitely check into that. Okay. Um, in time, that sidewalk that's on the east side of Brett Favre Pass um, will then bend and go on the north side of Brett Favre Pass and tie into, tie into home grid. But yeah. um, we're waiting until the, the legacy, the old Jersey store um, yeah. kind of yeah. development occurs, and that'll all happen yeah. at that time. And Green Bay is putting one, on, you said, on the east side of Brett Favre, so the north-south section will have one next to the legacy hotel. I thought it was already. No, it's dirt right now. Maybe, that's what I was thinking, maybe there it's coming, it's coming, but it's all There's right supposed now. to be, if there's not. I'd, yeah. Lot, lot, the plans that I saw, yeah, it had sidewalk went in there. I guess I can look at that again. Uh, maybe they just didn't do that flat work yet, but I thought they were done with pretty much all the concrete in that area. Yeah, I don't know. It does. I don't think it's in front of the Legacy Hotel on uh, Tony Canadale yet either, if I remember right. So maybe they just haven't installed it along that whole new development there yet. Right. Because it you know, got so late in the year, they did put it in. But I yeah, mean, just something if you can maybe just check into it and see what you think, and maybe check the lights and right. and see, and then maybe give us an idea of what's Ashwaba and what's. It sounds like. So this is yeah. This, this so map, the back side of Stadium View. Just run a line. This uh, yellow line matches the municipal boundary. Okay. So we have jurisdiction of this section. Okay. By far. Okay. And then anything behind that yellow line is all Green Bay. Okay. We do have sidewalk terminating here, yeah. and the plan was to, and I'm not sure their timeline, so we can verify that, but their plan was to extend sidewalk all along Tony Canadale and Red Farf Pass. I'm guessing it's just simply related to the timing of completion of construction for Legacy, because they didn't yeah, complete the project thinking. until January, end of December. Yeah. Um, so I, I would assume, but again, we'll confirm timeline to complete that sidewalk. Okay. That would be great. Yeah. I know, I know what you're saying, there's no conflict for those right turners, but the people walking in the street there, and that car won't just winged around that corner fast, and luckily they didn't get hit, but that's the only bad thing, the sight lines, and there's so many cars that park there, and it's hard to see, and they park into the no parking zone all the time on that corner. There's a car always hanging way over, um, so it's just, it's so congested there, and there's just nowhere for pedestrians really to go that they can stay safe um, to walk through that area and the lights so poor and everything. But if you can just check me, talk to Green Bay and come back with, you know, just give us an update, that would be great. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Anything else for public works or public works related things, anybody? All right. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Parks and Recreation. David, do you have anything? Yeah, I do. We are uh, working with Brave for the next phase of the Flamme River Trail. Uh, me and Rex were out at Flamme last week with a nice weather, and we kind of walked the path that the trail is going to take. Uh, so we're just kind of planning out different rest stops and potential access stops. 
So just kind of an uh, initial walk so we could get an idea before we do the freeze again, uh, what we're thinking for the spots. Um, just trying to plan best the different amenities that we're going to be working on the trail. Uh, it was nice to get out and not be trudging through school. <laughs> um, and then the Argonne Trail, um, that is going to be dug out uh, for, a crusher, for a crusher dust, dust trail on the backside of Argonne. Um, unfortunately, due to the conditions that didn't allow access into the woods this winter, uh, we're looking at 2025 installed the pathway going through the woods. Um, with all the tree removal and how wet it is back there, the ground has to be frozen to cut down the trees. That's all we got. Thank you. Any other questions? Thanks for the phone and press. Um, and Mario was here right. for a while. So what do you got for us, Mario? Sure. So I'm uh, filling in for Natalie Bombstead. Um, so first, just wanted to thank the uh, Village of Eshwabanon. We hosted our fifth annual Lowell Wellbeing Summit at the Eshwabanon Community Center. The venue was gorgeous, just great experience there. So that was, uh, was and our office recently moved to Eshwabanon, so it was nice for us to then be able to celebrate um, right here in our in our new home. Um, so we're actually located in the Prevea headquarters off of Hanson Road. Uh, so just wanted to thank everyone that was there in attendance that's here today, including Joel, who was able to accept a well-being impact award on behalf of Eshwabanon Public Safety for the work that they do with Frog over the uh, last five years that we've been hosting these events. Um, Frogger is part of the Wello Yield to Your Neighbor campaign. So a uh, quick overview on that is uh, that is a marketing campaign aimed at doing what the title says, getting more people to yield to pedestrians and bicyclists and crosswalks, and just in general when sharing the road. Uh, the tagline to the campaign is it's safer, it's courteous, it's the law. So if people ask, why should I yield? Hopefully it's for one of those three reasons, if not all three. Um, so, as I mentioned, Frogger is a part of the Yield to Your Neighbor campaign, and we are excited to announce that Frogger is coming back this summer. Um, assuming that we can get all of our law enforcement partners that have participated in the past, and the potential that um, the Oneida Police Department may be joining us this year, so that's the uh, next group we're trying to bring on, that would bring us to level, uh, seven law enforcement agencies. And among those seven, we would then be able to have crosswalk efforts in 11 municipalities across Brown County. So. Um, what started originally with just two departments has grown vastly over the last five years. So really proud of that effort. And like last year, we're also going to be offering Frogger training to any of the officers that are participating in Frogger. Um, we also open that up department-wide. So even if you're not doing one of the Frogger operations, but you want to learn more about bike and pedestrian law, um, it is open to all officers to receive that training. And the training consists of the classroom portion, where again, just went over anything and everything related to bicycle pedestrian law, most common reasons for crashes, providing them with that information that unfortunately officers don't receive during their training academy. So this is one of the few ways that they can actually get a better understanding of this. And the instructor, you all know, Peter Fluke, uh, we're fortunate enough to hire We Bike ETC to offer this training. So I think it really offers with Peter's background as having been an officer, plus a bicycle pedestrian safety consultant, um, really brings together the blend of both of those worlds. So just couldn't ask for someone better to offer that training to the officer. So um, we are looking for a date in late April. So looking at also having two sessions as in the past, the morning session and an afternoon session. So hopefully get representation from all those departments and really get as many officers as possible to receive that training. Um, then the second part of that training is we actually go outside and kind of do a quick little frogger um, with the officers. So the officers are able to ask Peter any questions that they have. Peter can firsthand show this is what it looks like when the violation occurs. Um, and then if there's any questions they have about, oh, is this in the gray? What's, you know, what makes this black and white? Peter's happy to answer all of that. Um, and then new this year, um, we're gonna actually offer that training to the community. So it's gonna be a free community session to anyone that's interested in learning more about bike pedestrian laws, um, more details around how froggers are operated, the logistics behind it. Um, so also working on a date for that, we are looking at doing it though around the same time as we provide that officer training. So also around late April, so we're thinking somewhere between April 29th and May 1st um, to offer the officer training as well as the community session. Um, so again, it's free. So if anyone in this room would like to attend, um, we're waiting again on date and then location. Um, and then the third new addition that we're hoping to add this year is actually working with any community members and then law enforcement members that are interested on creating 
pretty much kind of like a trifold pamphlet of bike and pedestrian laws. So just here's a quick go-to that we can put in every squad car throughout Brown County that they can grab it, read it, okay, what's pedestrian law? What did I just see here? What am I supposed to be looking for? And the idea of having community and law enforcement together to really provide both aspects of what as pedestrians when we're crossing, as bicyclists when we're riding, do we want to make sure officers are aware of X, Y, Z? And then from the officer standpoint, um, ensuring that they are upholding the laws and have an understanding of the laws. So we think we can bring community, law enforcement together, um, really create something that would be meaningful. And then again, the idea would then be to, um, all of this information is public domain, so we could actually then brand it, include all of the logos of all parts of state law enforcement departments, and really make it a Brown County-wide effort. So again, have it in every vehicle, um, and know that all, municipal all municipalities have that and cannot really operate under that same umbrella. So yeah, those are what we're hoping to shoot for uh, this year for Yield to Your Neighbor. So happy to answer any questions. I threw a lot at you fast, so. <laughs> you did. That's good. Any questions for Mario? Um, like Mario said, Roger started with two communities and he's been spearheading it for years and he's done just a great job to get other communities and other departments involved in it. So, and you know, their reports that they've done, it's really made a difference. You know, it's impacted the community, impacted our officers. So. It's a, it's a good program, and we appreciate you offering it out to us and all the communities in the Brown County area. Thank you. So, Quick question. Did we have the 24 prior dates? I got you. Yeah, we'll be confirming those. Okay. We're probably looking again, probably the June, August, October timeline, which is what we've done in the past. So, but yeah, but I'll be getting an email up very shortly to confirm those two dates. Thank you. Are you doing, um, Magnus for the cars this year, or is that something? Yes, we do have funding. So for any okay. law enforcement departments that would be interested, we would actually be able to provide um, yield to your neighbor magnets. So we were able to pilot with them, uh, pilot them with Green Bay Police Department last year. We do need to see how they did because they did give us a warning that with magnets they can easily fall off, whether it's too much salt, depending on what time of the year you put them on during car washes. Um, so if that, depending on how many get returned, or we don't, we're not asking for them, like, how many they still have we may switch to stickers, but still the same concept of deal to your neighbor, put them on squad cars so that they're spreading that message throughout. Mario, just for the record, can you tell me your last name? Sure, Gonzalez, G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z. -E Thank you. My eyes aren't. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make it out, I was like, yeah, no, too big of a change. Well, I'm sure my <laughs> short background probably didn't make it easier too because of the tiny little holes. So <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions from Mario, anybody? Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. All right, then we will go on to item eight, which is items for discussion and possible action. Um, Review and possible discussion 2018 bicycle pedestrian plan and the role of the bicycle and pedestrian committee. I know Kim, I don't know if you want to say anything to start. Kim had asked us to be put on the agenda um, just to kind of go through it and move forward. So, Kim, I don't know if you want to add anything or say anything at the beginning before we get into it. Far. Sure, thank you. Um, this, this report had come up at the last meeting, and I thought maybe to just loop Sharon and I in and anyone else who has joined the committee. Since the time it was developed, then we'd all have, we would level set or have a shared understanding of what were the goals that were set, what progress we've made, and do we want to course correct at all or what we want to focus on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Kim. All right, and Joel, I believe this is yours. Right. And any of the other staff, if you guys want to kick off, feel free. Brian, Brian, Mario, unless you would like to stay in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think I'm, I think I have it to work, right? So Kim, hopefully you can see that, okay? All right. So as Kim had mentioned, she had asked just to have some information presented, kind of to, I guess, set a foundation for what what the role of the committee is and what its goals and objectives are, and then ultimately where where are we going forward? Because it seems like you know, we've had a couple new members come in, come online over the last few months. We've had other members leave. So kind of where are we at 
at, at present? And then how do we better align the, the overall committee to fundamentally meet the goals that have been established by the village of Ashwaubenon? So that's kind of what our role is today in, in this presentation. So first and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about alignment because I think there may be a degree of people that may feel like we're maybe misaligned at times, right? Mm -hmm. So Leroy wants Hanson Road done now. Uh, <laughs> the budget, it says 2028, the board might feel otherwise. Use another example of Home Grid Way. There was a lot of discussion last month. This committee feels strongly one way about reconfiguring Home Grid Way. Village board feels differently. So there's, there's obviously some misalignment. And ultimately what we want to do is try to get this committee, the board, and staff in alignment with one another, moving in a similar or same direction so that we can ultimately accomplish the goals and objectives that have been established by, by the village. So before I do that, I want to just touch briefly on the strategic plan. The, the village of Ashwaubenon adopted a strategic plan about two and a half, almost three years ago. Um, so we, we we're well on our way in accomplishing many of the items that have been uh, identified in that strategic plan. The reason why I bring that up is it really ultimately ties together all of the other planning documents or planning exercises the village has undertaken as required by law or as it's deemed necessary. So as an example, the comprehensive plan. So that's one element that I think even Kim had mentioned. We, we talk about this comprehensive plan. What is that? So from a, a nomenclature standpoint, the comprehensive plan is the planning document that is used by the village to plan <coughs> land uses and development throughout the entire community. The comprehensive plan is required by law to have. You need to have a comprehensive plan that ident identifies what future growth and development will look like over the next 20 year period. Generally speaking, you update that plan as required by law every 10 years. So it's a 20 year outlook, but every 10 years you really look at it. The comprehensive plan has multiple chapters in it, I think seven to be exact. One of those seven chapters talk, talks about in details transportation. And transportation is gonna be anything from vehicular tra transportation to multimodality things like bicyclists, pedestrians, mass transit, it even gets so far as transportation as it relates to navigational transportation, as well as air travel. So it, it touches on all of those aspects. Now, coincidentally, other than, uh, I, I suppose, to some lesser degree navigation, we have all of those elements in our community, right? We have the Fox River, so there's some navigation, albeit maybe not so much so for commercial purposes, but we have an airport in Ashwaubenon, so we have to focus on that. And then it comes down to how do we connect those, those destination points collected, both from a vehicular standpoint to mass transit to, to multi-modality uh, points of view. Beyond that, we have our, what we call our comprehensive pedestrian and bicycle plan. That's really the, 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 the planning document that this body, or this committee is primarily focused on. It takes the elements of the comprehensive plan and makes it more detailed, right? So it's very, very specific, almost down to the street level. There are very specific projects and recommendations in the pedestrian and bicycle plan that pinpoint it literally to like an intersection, right? So it takes the concepts in the comp plan, breaks them down even further, and makes very specific recommendations. So the, the strategic plan takes both of those elements, and I'll, let me back up again. Um, so we have the comp plan, we have the co comprehensive pedestrian bicycle plan, and then another document that really kind of ties into this committee is the, you'll like this even more, the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan, or CORP. So there's three planning documents that are rolled into the strategic plan. The comp plan, or the comprehensive plan, the bike and ped plan, or the ped and bike plan, depending on who you talk to, and then the CORP or the Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan. The REC plan really talks about trails, connectivity between parks. It's really the, the guiding document in all things in our park system. But they all kind of tie together in some degree because there may be trails and other connectivity between those. What the strategic plan was to do was to identify and emphasize all three of those plans, albeit unique as they are, 
are relevant to achieving the vision that the board has for the community. So they're all very important documents. With that being said, the bicycle and pedestrian plan and the bike and pet plan, that's really where this committee's focus should be on because that's what this committee was charged with doing. Um, so from a strategic standpoint, the village board along with staff went through a comprehensive review process in crafting that strategic plan. It put together a mission, vision, and some core values, and then ultimately identified six strategic directives that it would use to help carry out the items that are identified in all these different plans. I'm talking at a very high, high level. At the end of the day, uh, the staff is charged with along with the advisement of various committees, this being one of them, in identifying action items for uh, very specific uh, recommendations that coincide with that strategic plan. So again, to kind of break this down further, so the strategic plan identifies six strategic directives. Those are those high-reaching things. Those six strategic directives are accompanied with kind of large goal statements. From there, each of those goals and directives have very specific key initiatives. Depending on the goal, there could be anywhere from three to six initiatives that are identified. And then from there, there are very, very specific action items that co coincide with that. So I'll give you uh, a few examples here. So the six strategic directives in the strategic plan are identified here. From the committee's point of view, you're predominantly focused on items one and three. So enhancing our quality of life, as well as improving and maintaining our public infrastructure and facilities. Although it could be argued that maybe you're talking a little bit about public health and safety, there isn't anything currently in the strategic plan as far as initiative or action items that were identified that were, are really relevant to this committee at this time. In the future, certainly could happen. But there, as you can see, there are other elements in the strategic plan that maybe don't delve to the very specific nature of bike and ped interests, such as providing effective communication and engagement. I, I suppose you could, but there's enough meat in that directive already that the efforts that this committee takes are accounted for in those initiatives. So here, here are those two items more specifically. So enhancing quality of life, that's our strategic directive. Very forward, very direct. The goal is to obviously nurture the community's cultural fabric by advancing and expanding its diverse set of recreational entertainment and cultural opportunities. It identifies our park and rec department as being a resource of pride and connection to the community. So that's very important to the individuals uh, putting together this strategic plan. So if you think about it, we're trying to connect <coughs> those recreational opportunities, the entertainment opportunities, and cultural opportunities within the community. Um, and so one of those uh, objectives or key initiatives in the plan talks about planning, developing, improving, and maintaining the village's quality of life assets, both public and private. And an action item very specific to that is implement the village's pedestrian and bicycle plan. So very bluntly and, and forward, that's what we're, our, we're charged with. Um, Complementary to that, improving and maintaining public infrastructure, uh, the village provides and maintains functionally appropriate, sustainable, accessible, and high quality infrastructure and facilities to serve the needs of our citizens, our businesses, and visitors. We have an objective of improving our roads and highways, pedestrian, bike, and transit infrastructure, and then more specifically, complete bicycle, pedestrian, and trail projects as identified in the village's planning documents, whether that be the comp plan, the court plan, or the bicycle and pedestrian plan. So the, the work that's in this planning document, the bike and pet plan, are very important to achieving the overall strategy. So you can see the alignment that was, was deliberately taken to try to get our strategies aligned with some of the other action items. In your packet, I included the full copy of the current revised bicycle and or pedestrian and bicycle plan. So that planning document was originally created in 2009. 
It had been revised in 2011, as well as a final revision, our most recent copy in 2018. So we're about five to six years out from our last major revision on that document. And we have talked in the past about working towards the end of updating and doing a full revision or a full review of that planning document. Because it, it has been a number of years. There are a number of projects that have been completed. And quite honestly, there may be priorities that have changed. So we need to, to amend that document. Can I interrupt one question? Yep. So the two updates were done internally by staff, correct? The 11 and 18, or was that did they hire a professional firm to do that? Too? I believe there was some general consultation. I think this committee assisted in the revision, okay. based on my understanding. Uh, right. Brown County Planning helped a little bit. I'm not sure if both was still involved at that time. I think they were. They may have helped in 2011 because I think they may have still been operating okay. to some extent. Um, but both eventually kind of went away and turned into Cedar Corp. Um, Nick Sparatio, who was involved in the original document, I think he was gone by then, but he was with Brown County. Yeah. So there was some interplay in okay. 2011. I think Leroy and I were here in 18, and it was done either in this committee or with staff, according to my recollection. I don't know. combination. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so getting getting back to the planning document, so again, we're, we're about due to have our document review in earnest. Um, one of the things that we had advised from a staff point of view is that we are we are actually in the midst of completing an update to our comprehensive plan. So oftentimes the comprehensive plan looks at the totality of the village and it certainly includes a component of the bike and ped plan, but generally speaking the comp plan drives the bike and ped plan, right? So our advice to the committee was, let's get through the comp plan process first. Let's identify areas of need from there. And then once that document is done, then we would revise our pedestrian bicycle. So we anticipate that our comprehensive planning effort will be done sometime at the end of this year or maybe early in the first quarter of next year. That's kind of where the goal is set at this present moment. Um, to provide just a brief update, we've gone through and initiated the public participation process of the comp plan. It was very sparsely attended, um, but we did we did initiate that. We we're currently soliciting feedback online through a tool online. And so once that wraps up, then we'll start crafting uh, the chapters. And one of those, again, being that transportation section, will come before this committee for review and conversation. So this committee will play an active role in writing the chapter on transportation, specifically as it relates to bicycle and pedestrian interest. Joel, do you know how long we'll be able to put comments online? Is that closing at the end of the month? Or do you um, have any idea? I, I thought know. it was the end of the month. Don't quote me on it. So I, I thought it was the 28th. And is that on our website that you could, the link is there? So yeah, anyone? Do you know, by any chance? Do you recall when they were going to pull that mapping tool? I don't recall. Okay. I thought it was a long time ago. It was still on there for a short bit, so I'll verify and I can send okay. it Okay, yeah, I've always checked the website and you guys look at it and you, there's some mapping and you can put in mm -hmm. comments of different areas and click and give some input into, into the plan. Uh, okay, so from a bicycle and pedestrian plan standpoint or a pet bike yeah. plan, however you want to say it, that particular plan uses a little bit different um, naming convention. Uh, we have goals, we have objectives, and we have, we have policies and recommendations. So the goals are those large, broad, overreaching kind of uh, statements. Think of those as things that are gonna take 20 plus years to accomplish, right? So those are those large, lofty statements. The objectives are specific to addressing key issues, opportunities, and desires or problems that were identified in the plan. So as an example, um, one of the goals in the plan talks about developing a pedestrian and bicycle transportation system that effectively connects destinations throughout the village, eliminates or mitigates hazards and barriers to biking and walking. Then one of the su supporting objectives to that is to establish pedestrian and bicycle routes that safely connect the four major regions of the village. Um, those are separate, those being separated by highways 41 and 172. So when you look at the overall map, the village is kind of divided in those four quadrants. 
by and large. And so that the goal when this plan was adopted and still was retained through 2018 is how do we connect those four regions, even though we have these very large natural man-made barriers to that connection? Where are those logical locations? Um, so those, those touch on the goals and objectives. The policies are kind of rules or courses of action to achieve the fulfillment of those stated goals. So those are kind of changing really what I view as thought processes, right? So how do we think about pedestrian and bicycle usage in the community when we plan and design infrastructure? And what should be the policies that are used to, to do that? Or what are the policies that are in place to maintain certain infrastructure? So if you had an opportunity to look through the plan under the policy section, it talks about um, quite often what are referred to as visually narrowed lanes. So the village of Ashwaubenon, albeit maybe not so much uh, different from other communities, had this large propensity early on in using these things called visually narrowed lanes. And basically all it is is it's a marked shoulder on an urban roadway. So you have your curb and gutter, you have a, a large, large or wide roadway, 37 plus feet in width, and to, in order to allow for this visualization of this shared use area on the road, it was thought to paint white stripes down the shoulder of the road, thus creating the area that people should travel with vehicles, and then all other uses, parking, bicycle use, pedestrian use, so on and so forth. Um, it, was prolifer it was proliferated throughout the entire village, um, but from a, an infrastructure standpoint, it, it isn't necessarily viewed as the most safest method of particularly pedestrian transportation, especially in certain applications. <clears throat> so there was this thought process from a policy standpoint, one, we weren't gonna use them anymore, but we weren't gonna necessarily take them away either, right? They were gonna stay, but then again, we weren't gonna necessarily maintain them. So if they kind of went away on their own, they would go away on their own. So think of that as a policy statement. You're not gonna necessarily do anything, um, but you're not going to necessarily change anything either, okay? So if you look in your plan, that that's one of the items, all right? So those are policies. And then if you work your way to the back of the document, it talks specifically about recommendations. And there's a table listing uh, various and very specific actions or projects the village should be prepared to complete as funding, staffing, timing, or other critical resources are available. So that's ultimately what we work from, is those are the areas of emphasis in the plan. Certainly we have our goals and our objectives and we have our policies. But where those, those larger items come, uh, come into play is when we're evaluating, right? So we evaluate our actions against our goals, objectives, and policies. The recommendations are those actionable items that we undertake. In your packet, I included a list. I had asked staff to put together a list of various projects that we've completed primarily over the last probably five or so years. Um, I tried to break them down under the four E's that are identified in the plan, engineering, education, encouragement, and enforcement. Um, you can clearly see that engineering is the largest areas of emphasis, which to be expected, because that's where you're going to get probably your largest bang for your buck. Um, with that, in the plan, we've identified several maps. Those maps correspond to the specific recommendations that are listed in the table. So the first map that I have up on the screen and that's in the packet is towards the end of the, the plan and that's map, map number one, I believe. And it identifies the pedestrian and facility priorities as of 2018. So again, this, this particular map has not been updated in earnest from 2018. So there are a number of projects that have been completed that are not reflecting reflecting in this map in the packet. But as you can see, there are a number of planned sidewalks and multi-use trails. Those are areas that are identified in dashed lines. And then it also inventories on this map anyway, um, 
where the existing sidewalks and multi-use trails are. <clears throat> Corresponding to that map, we also have the same for bicycle facility priorities. Again, map number two identifies where those priorities are. There's a number of planned facilities, as well as existing infrastructure shown. A couple things to note on this particular um, map as opposed to the last one. The last one was specific to sidewalks. The second map on map two is specific to bicycle, on-street bicycle facilities or trails, which bicycles are able to use. Of note, there is obviously bicycle lanes. Bicycle lanes are dedicated bicycle areas that are marked with lining, signage, and restrictions to other uses. There are on-street bicycle routes, and those could be a combination of many things. So you may see signage that says bicycle route. You may see on-street stenciling, where you have kind of the stencil of the bicyclist. You may have chevrons associated with that stencil. Could be a combination of those two things. Those are generally identified as on-street bicycle routes. A paved shoulder would be predominantly, from our plan's point of view, would be a rural road, so generally gravel shoulders, with an extension of pavement beyond the, the, the delineated travel lane, the end line, the white line, if you will. And then a wide curb lane would be simply just a urbanized road that has more, more than enough room for both a travel lane as well as space for other uses. Could be bicyclists, could be parking, so on and so forth. Um, generally, that travel lane for vehicles is anywhere from, as I think, as narrow as 9 feet up to traditionally up to 14 feet. 9 feet, I would probably, or I would probably kind of choke a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 10, 11, 12 feet is that traditional width. I think DOT standard on a traditional DOT road is 12, 12. Yep. so 12 feet. Um, interestingly, another map in the packet, which is map 3, identifies the village's functional classification. And to me, this map is very important because it ties in many of the policies or, excuse me, the goals, the objectives, and some policies within the plan. So when you look at this map, roads that are identified in red are those principal arterials. So think of roads that have high volumes of traffic at higher rates of speed, right? Your interstates, your state trunk highways, uh, maybe some county road facilities, depending on nature. Think Oneida Street, Lombardi Avenue, things of that nature. Your minor arterials are those roads that connect kind of the major arterials, but also longer sections of your area of concern. So if you think of those areas, Cormier Avenue is considered a minor arterial. So if you think about that, it connects all the way from Ashland all the way out to Packerland. So it's kind of an alternate to some of those other principal arterials. Uh, and then we have collectors. And generally, collectors are roads that are connecting the arterial streets together. So again, all of these streets within the functional classification are important because they generally will have higher rates of travel for vehicles. They connect a large portion of your village, especially points of destination, because if you think about it, most points of destination are gonna to wanna to be close to one of these connecting points. Um, but then also, it is also functionally classed from a standpoint of our Metropolitan Planning Organization, or MPO. So these roads oftentimes have the availability to be funded and supported by other mechanisms of, of resources like state transportation aids, federal transportation aids, things of that nature. So not only is the need probably greater on these streets to provide multimodal transportation, but there are alternate funding sources to support that as well. And sometimes required. And sometimes money. required depending on if you get the grant or not. Yes, exactly. So if you recall back, um, and maybe Kim and Sharon, I'm thinking you guys were on the committee at this time, but back this fall, we have put together a prioritization list of projects that have yet to be completed. 
So if you think about our bike and ped, ped plan, has the recommendations, though a lot, by and large, many of those things have been completed that are low hanging fruit. There are still projects within that plan that are kind of larger in nature, and to be quite honest with you, could be viewed as very controversial projects. So they haven't been completed yet. So what we did this past fall is we took what was remaining on that list and all of the other projects that have been identified along the way and compiled it into this prioritization list that's on the screen and, and that you've likely seen in your packet before September, October. We identified kind of a budget impact, so kind of three thresholds. If it was under 100,000, that was a low cost impact. It was a medium impact, 100 to 250, and then a high impact. And then what we did is we prioritized that. So what do we think we can accomplish over the next five years? And then anything that's beyond five years, what's the priority, right? So what should we move up? Um, and again, this list includes projects that could be viewed as somewhat controversial depending on who you ask. Projects may include the establishment of a bicycle, which would then eliminate parking. Um, projects could include the installation or retrofitting of sidewalk that could impact street trees and other neighborhood um, interests. So think of like Argonne or Marley and putting in sidewalk there. So those are on the list, but not quite the same priority as, as others. So with that, um, you know, I, I kind of put this, I put this together for new trustees primarily. And Joel, this is adapted Joel, from somebody else. Kim, yeah, go ahead. Can I ask a quick question about the document we were on previously? Yep. What, what is the, the use? I mean, I think it's a very valuable document. How do we make this a working document in your opinion? Is there, a, do we review it annually, quarterly? What, what do we do with all this work you've put into this? Yeah, and I think that's kind of, up, uh, we'll talk about a little bit more in detail, but I think that this is a certainly a working document, and it is definitely a document that this committee is going to want to review and um, kind of manipulate, if you will, annually. And it should be done in advance of our budget and capital improvement planning process that we undertake for all other expenditures within the village. So you're gonna, you know, we'll talk about this. I kind of laid out some recommendations for the group uh, in my memo. It's about second quarter, we start talking about these projects that are gonna be planned for for at least next year, minimally. And then what would you prioritize over the next five years? And then in third quarter, we finalize that because that will align perfectly with the village board's effort in developing a budget and the CIP. And the reason why I say don't, don't just list next year's projects, list your priority over the next five years, because when we do the budget, we may have more funding available to complete more projects in one year, and so we may elevate things, or we may have less money than what's identified as the priority for next year, but there may be another project in the next five years that fits that threshold, and we can elevate that. So it's really important to list the, what you know. What are the main priorities over the next five years? Joel, I think maybe a good example of, of that annual review was our last year. We talked about and, and instituted plowing the the yeah. paths. Yep. <clears throat> I think that was a good example of, of the way that process worked. Right. We started talking about it early at the village board, and it just takes time to do that stuff. Yeah, and I'll back up too on this sheet. So this document here, we used from a staff perspective in preparing the budget for 2024, particularly. And then we are still refining, but we have a draft document that we're using internally right now. It will make its way to the village board for adoption this year but a full-fledged, in-depth, five-year capital improvement plan. So the projects that you see here will be included in that as well. So as I mentioned, as things come and go, priorities change, uh, resources are available, things could move up, could move down, and so Leroy might get Hanson Road next year, for example. It could, it could move up, but at least it's identified. 
I, I, there were three or four bought them just today. Just, you know, oh, I know. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's continuous. Constant, yeah. And you know, what kind of bugs me is, you know, we've been talking about this, you know, forever. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many years ago. I mean, I don't know how many years I've been on this dollar and committee. And I'll tell you what, yeah. I've talked about this forever. Sure. You know, yeah. um, and you know, and I, and I started looking here, I look at the traffic count. Yeah. You know, Hanson Road is, you know, 9,300 in 2015. Mm -hmm. 2024, I'll bet you it's 14,000. Hanson Road, the traffic on Hanson Road has more traffic than hardly any other roads except Oneida, you know, your main. You're making a good pitch. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I really am. I mean, you know, I mean, I know there's been no accidents on Hanson Road as far as uh, pedestrians or anything like that, but you know what? I would not doubt that someday it's going to happen. You know, that's, cool. that's just. Yeah. So, kind of getting back to this, I only have a couple more quick slides and then we'll, we'll kind of discuss it. But this is kind of a, a, and it says council, this is adapted from another community, uh, city manager. So just replace council for village board. And then when you look at it from a committee standpoint, the sweet spot for the committee and then ultimately the village board is the upper level vision visionary items, right? So this committee is really purposed with advising the village board. And what you're really working towards is those priority action items, right? The village kind of creates and casts the vision. It establishes some strategic goals. Certainly, it takes the advice and advisement from committee in establishing those goals, hence the Mike and Pat plan. But really, where it comes into play is that 30,000 foot level. How do we prioritize our action? What are our priorities for the coming year? And doing that. Once that gets done, then there may be some work to be played at the planning and oversight level from the standpoint of okay, did we, are we hitting the scope appropriately? Think of the Industrial Park Trail, right? So that's a project where we anticipated the project to be more pavement maintenance. This committee has talked about maybe doing more of a full scale reconstruct, right? So we're, we're changing out some things beyond what we originally scoped out. So if we talk about those projects at a higher level, we can hopefully cater and tailor the needs of the committee and the board together in unison. The day-to-day -day work, the actual completion of the projects, that's really a staff function. So your job as a committee and the committee of the council and the board is really just engaging with the community, letting them know what we're doing. Um, and we'll carry out the day-to-day -day stuff and, and hopefully do that and be successful. So as I mentioned to, to Kim's question, I put together some recommendations to kind of hopefully bring some alignment both to this committee, its work as it relates to the village board, and then quite honestly, to, to help staff. Um, we carry out the work that's being directed to us. So if, if we're kind of running in circles a little bit, that's hard for us. Um, and it, it, it really is cumbersome in order for us to be successful, we need, we need solid and clear direction. Um, so I think in order to do that, our recommendation is to look at it from a quarterly standpoint, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean meeting by meeting, but generally in the first quarter, um, I think what we should do is conduct a review of accomplishments that we've completed prior year. So I think Tracy's brought this up many times about kind of creating an annual report. So first quarter, our goal as a group is to create an annual report for the accomplishments that it did last year, right? Then from there in the first quarter, we're going to review, it's just kind of a quick review of the projects that have, had already been planned and then approved as part of the budget process. So that way you have an idea of what's going on. Now, I will say, as far as scope goes, the scope's pretty much pretty well defined. It's just a quick review. If there's something that can fit within the project scope, we can make it happen. But it's just, hey, these are the things that are happening again, so that you can be the cheerleader saying, look at what we're doing, right? Um, generally speaking, grants become available sometime in April, sometime in June, sometime in September. Those are kind of the three windows of grants specific to these types of infrastructure projects. So it would be a great opportunity to identify other projects that would qualify for a grant and should we apply. So you do that early in, in the first quarter, that gives us that window of time from a staff perspective to prepare that. And then we can go to the board and get authorization to apply for those grants. One thing that you'll note is I put this under each quarter is that upon request of the village board, review and advise regarding proposed ordinances, policies affecting bike impact. Right. So 
as an example, the village board wants us to review how we want to handle e-bikes. Well, this is the committee that's charged with that. They send that back down to committee. Committee reviews it and provides the recommendation. And that could happen at any point throughout the year. So that's why it's being shown each quarter. So in regard to that one, also just a clarifier to make sure that I'm thinking of this properly. This committee can also address items that we've come up with, correct? I mean, some come from the village board down, mm -hmm. some go the other way. So that doesn't prohibit, that statement doesn't prohibit us also doing that. So if there's things that we have to do, want to look into, like Home Greenway was a good example of that. We decided to pursue that. The, the um, uh, clearing of the trails was another one. So that does not prohibit us from doing that, correct? Yeah, and uh, what I would suggest, and I, I think we've, we've made this um, made this known too, that when we want to do those types of initiatives, whether it be Home Greenway or the bike friendly application or some of those larger initiatives that could be viewed, I would say, okay, we talked about it at the committee level, that this is a this desire that you wish to achieve. Let's take it to the board just to confirm that that, that is the plan, right? <clears throat> that it fits within that. And it, clearly, if it fits within the the, 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 the plan and it's been discussed about, then obviously it, it, it's going to be something of interest for the board to look at. Okay, so second quarter, so now we're talking um, kind of April, May, June. We need to start talking about project priorities for the next year and then, and then ultimately the next five years after that. And the reason for that is if, if things get moved around, staff need some time to prepare some initial thoughts on estimated probable cost of construction, scope of work, things of that nature. So if we do that in the second quarter, that gives should give us enough time for our action and activity in the third quarter. Um, generally speaking, we have our bicycle rodeo in the second quarter. We've done Frogger, even though it could be done anytime in June, July, or August. But Frogger, so really supporting those education and encouragement and enforcement measures. I think it would be great for the committee to engage itself in those efforts or any other efforts. Um, and then obviously, again, advise and support the village board in their goals. The third quarter talks about finalizing a recommendation about what those project priorities are for the next year and the next five years. So as I mentioned, July and August is when budgets start becoming due for our department staff. So if that's completed in the third quarter, when we get to Village Board and we start to present to them in July and August what the recommendations are from committee, we've, we've finalized those. So I think that's where we start focusing on that list, Kim, about what, what our priorities are and, and finalizing that. Um, what we want to do, too, is at that point start to review the plan. Right? So we, we talk about a number of things. I'll give you an example. Um, last month we talked about South Point Road and the bicycle lanes, and I think Kyle, you had mentioned you know, some desire about adding some facilities on North Road and making some connections. Okay? Coincidentally, that, that's not in the plan. So at present, it's not in the plan. It's not to say you can't put it in the plan, but those would be the types of projects that you'd say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna hold off, we're gonna talk about it in the third quarter, we're gonna add it into the plan, right? Um, and if there's something that shows up in the priority list that maybe isn't in the plan, then we can amend the plan to reflect that too, right? So we ultimately wanna bring that to the village board and get consent from them that we're good that way. And so we're not kind of chasing something that maybe isn't as fruitful as, as we thought. And then finally, the fourth quarter is kind of your breather, right? I think with the holidays, um, and, and all the things that are happening, budget by that time is, is generally adopted. Budget gets adopted in November, so maybe there's a little bit of work in November. Um, but if there's any changes, so based on what we talked about in the third quarter, any amendments or changes to the bike and head plan, that would be a great time to do that. Look at that plan, make those amendments, and then forward it on to the village board. So again, it kind of gives you a nice sequence of activities and gives you some structure. Um, without really tying you to anything specifically month to month. But it, hopefully as committee members, that would give you an idea, okay, what is our purpose, right? So for this quarter, you know, we're really focused on this effort. For this quarter, we're really focused on this effort, so on and so forth. So that is kind of the, the bulk of the presentation. Um, hopefully, Kim, I answered 
your request uh, satisfactorily. If I didn't, I will be happy to expand, expand on anything. It was very helpful for me, Joel. Thank you. I took like three pages of notes, so I'm feeling pretty <laughs> good. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions, anything to add uh, in regard to the plan? My one question, Joel, is, okay, so we said we wouldn't do a redo. So we're talking about redoing the whole thing, not just updating it at some point. So the town plan will be done at the end of this year or maybe early in 2025. So then we're looking at maybe starting in 2025. Okay, and then Brown County, I know when Cole was here, he had talked about the county could help with that maybe and put in for it. So I know he had originally said July of 2024. Is that still a timeline would, that they would need to know? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. They would need to know our interest, and that way they can budget for that type of activity. Okay. So well, then, my one worry is, right? and they were going to help us with our comp plan this year, and they are a little bit yeah. here and there. Um, but by and large, they had some staffing reductions as part of their budget. I think we should be okay because this is a transportation-related issue, and that's funded through the MPO. Okay. So we should be okay, but I'll just confirm that as okay. well. Okay. All right. So then you will reach out and see if they can put us on their priority list for 2025. Right. Because it's been, what, 15 years since the original one was done? Is that right? I'm my numbers up. 15 years because uh, 2009, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so what's traditionally when they redo a plan, like totally redo, is there like a standard that you know I would recommend every 10 years? Just okay. I mean, if you look through the document, there, yeah, well, the just, world has changed, well, it's <laughs> changed. Like, rapidly changing. Right. I think yeah. we've had more growth and changes than some other communities as well, so yeah. obviously that factor. And just yeah. the, the whole conversation on e bikes, and scooters, yes, and uh, micro transit is. Yeah. Completely change yeah. Yeah. how we view tra you know multimodal transportation. Yeah, well, even bus trans mm -hmm. has changed a lot too. With the ride shares, yeah. taxi, right. all of that. Ten yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Uber was Uber. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely wasn't in this area in 2009. No. no. Yeah. No. All right. Any other comments or questions, Joel? Thank you for putting that yeah. together. I like the idea of having it be more structured because I think like even in looking at that I came on the committee I think in 2018 right as we were finishing up all of that and then I think having more of like a structure and a plan for some of these even like how was that three or four months ago when we started talking about identifying the priorities of things <clears throat> that we wanted for that next year and I don't want to say being more realistic but I think we have to have that working relationship to get these things done. And I think if then we look at some of the things that have been frustrating that we want done more, I think then that gives us an area to say, okay, we need to then reprioritize our top five things. But again, every if we can't agree on it here, how can we expect, like, obviously we know everything's not going to get put through. So I think we need to, the, this will help us be more pointed to drive the specifics of things that we're looking for and hopefully alleviate some of the frustration that way. And then also hopefully again make more efficient, purposeful meetings to just get through and get those like, goals accomplished. So, yeah. If I remember right. that. Yeah. If I remember right, when I was chairperson, you know yeah. like you are. Yeah. I think I recommended at that time, I can't remember how many years ago that is. But I mean I recommended at that time that we complete have a complete redo. And I don't think we ever did that, did we? No, I don't think since the since 2009 yeah, that was yeah, that was the first full. I still got it at home if you want to see it. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing it even looks very similar to what Probably it was does. in 2018. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. they just took the we took they were taking they they made kind of some changes, some updated. Like yeah, that. yeah. I also think it's nice to be able to see what was done too, because I think it's really yes. easy to focus on all the things we want done and forget and lose sight of all the work that actually has been done too. Yeah, so I think. Like even having all that, it always really nice to see is like a yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that helps too. Yeah, like the graph we have has a lot of that has stuff in it too, correct? Because we kind of keep the tally of it, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Then you look back and go, well, we've done this, this, and this, and Hanson will get there someday. <laughs> You know, it's on the list. I know. I know. I, you know, when I look at the map here, you know, and it, uh, just a, a couple of 
car pump. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I know it's heavy. And now, like I said, I told Tracy, I said, we were, we've been very fortunate that we have not had accidents on that street. Yeah. Um, I do see, <clears throat> I mean, and I do ride hands a lot. I do see people walking on the south side all the time. I know there's a sidewalk on that side. Yeah. In fact, it's Susie always says, man, wait, what's the matter with these people? Why don't they walk on the sidewalk? Yeah. Well, that's true. But, yeah. and you know, and if we put a sidewalk on the south side, are you going to walk on that sidewalk? You know, that's the other thing. That's the walk convenient. Well, that's, that's what goes through my mind. You know, are they going to walk on that sidewalk or not? You know, I mean, but I, you know, okay. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It took a long time to get bike lanes on that road, too. That road. Yeah. The bridge yeah. was put in, then luckily the bridge had them on, and then it took probably eight years before they started the bike lanes on there. So, yeah. Even my street from Brenna, well, Ponderosa, I noticed that was, uh, on, as far as the traffic count, they didn't show a traffic count. But it showed it as a little yellow dot where uh, where accidents could happen, and I agree with that because of the school that's there. You know, yeah. the traffic on my street, in my house. Yeah. You know, I, I mean that's like nuts. Yeah. You know. It's busy over there. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. In fact, that's why I was a little bit late today because I couldn't get back. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had a hard time getting out of my driveway. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. All right. Any other questions? Anything else anyone wants to bring up? Otherwise, lots of good information. Please look at it. And like I said, we'll try to go by the recommendations and look at the quarterly things that we need to do and keep chugging away with it. And, um, we should probably all go on the village website and look at the information on the comprehensive. Plan yeah. Too. Yeah. And even the um, strategic plan is really good. It's very easy to read and it's not like 100 pages. It's pretty short and it gives you some good ideas on what the goals are. Um, the easy to read, so that's another good one. And that one's almost current. That was right there. 2022? As I say, yeah, it's, it's shortly after. Right? We'll, we'll like yeah. we, once the comp plan is updated and even like that plan, we're, we've accomplished most of the action items in there. So we'll, even though it was intended to be kind of a five year tool, it's probably going to need to get updated again. About three years, just to keep giving us those action items so that we can keep moving forward. All right. <clears throat> Sounds good. If there's nothing else, we'll move on to nine. Any items for next agenda? Um, the only things I had was maybe Parkview Road. Looking at that again, um, I know it got pushed off, and I don't know if you guys have time to look at that to talk further. I know the committee wanted to go look at it and see what they thought about bike lanes and bike designation out there. And the North Road, the discussion on the North Road area that Kyle had um, asked for, just to get an idea. Um, if you look at that whole area up there and just see again. Maybe a bike. Is, my idea was that should be a marked bike route, and the plan talks about marked bike routes, bike routes, and we don't have any of that in the village. So yeah, yeah. maybe you know certainly on North Road. But then just the wider scope of looking in the future, are we going to establish official bike routes or mark bike routes? Yeah. We discussed that there was, yeah, that there was no room for the, yeah. a bike lane. A bike lane, yeah. absolutely. And, that, yeah. and, and I, I took my bike down there at that. There's no, I could tell there's no room. Yeah. yeah. That's a narrow road. Okay, okay we don't want to be a bike lane. road. It's required to be a bike lane, correct? No. No. Like, so it can have signage. Correct. You can just have a sign saying this is a bike route, doesn't have a bike lane, doesn't have to have an accommodation correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I would advise with that is much like, like truck routes is if you are going to look at a single segment of roadway, you kind of have to look at the village as a whole as to where these preferred routes are. And is it is it a project that we're looking to do? Because it's going to come with thousands of dollars to buy all these signs and get them installed. So a um, good example of that is like uh, Ledgeview, they've got bike routes all throughout their entire municipality. Um, I know talking there with Greg, their director of public works, um, they, they had over $15,000 of just signs. And it's going to be a huge question because they've got routes all over. You know, it's, you know, the blue router, this router, you know, the dollar route. Those and, are bike loops. Come on. Yes, yes. The loops. Yes. They're, yes. All over, and there's signs all over. I mean, it's littered throughout their municipality. You know, if that's something that we want to do, it's something that we, we should probably be 
pretty big arching conversation. Well, and I don't know if that's how far he wants the like, cat wants to go. I think it was maybe just at least doing an overview of that area and see. It's not like and yeah, my my feeling is we talked about painting bike lanes on South Point, Point Road mm -hmm. and we have bike lanes on South Point Road. We had a trail on pack land. There should be a way to connect those. Right. And, and, and my thought was, you know, I've seen, I don't know if it's in the city or where I've seen just little square green signs on a metal stake that or yep. nailed to or bolted to a street oh, sign and just says bike road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you'd have to look. I mean, is that something that we would recommend or will we just advise someone to, you know, go up to Cormier where there actually is wider you know segments of roadway you know granted there there's still that little gap in the trail system but you know you'd have, you'd have to kind of look for it yeah i'll just say what jack told it since yeah. this item's not on the agenda, agenda. we're starting to talk about or, yes yeah, let's, we will put it on the next is, uh, agenda if that's yeah. okay just to get a feel for what we're thinking of and we won't discuss it anymore here because it's not on the agenda but um we'll just do a general discussion on that area and maybe look at what's there get a map showing where this and that is, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, okay. if it's, well, maybe if it's agreeable to everybody, because I know for sure Parkview and um, North Road are not included in the plan right now as designated bicycle lanes. I don't think either of them actually have it marked as allowed. So we're really kind of making an amendment to that plan. Let's bring the map back and let's review where existing and planned bicycle facilities are located as part of the plan and then let's play on the map a little bit we can identify and you know touch on some of the points that were just discussed uh, albeit um, off the record okay <laughs> so then the agenda item would be not specific to north road area we'll just talk about um, look at the map that has our proposed and existing bicycle facilities and then kind of look at that and go from there okay you can do that yep all right all right, anything else on the agenda anybody have for next month? Um, then our next meeting is April 8th. And I will uh, welcome a motion to adjourn. I make a motion. I'll second it. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.